another day working on the Volvo and today basically I've made everything that was wrong right again so relocated the fuel pressure regulator somewhere better but more importantly breather system as you can see it comes off the cam cover there and it's right there to this bloody great big catch tank and it's not really a catch tank it's more of an, a proper oil separator because if you can you can't see very well let me get bring some light to it as you can hopefully see there you go that is going back to the block a downhill slope all the way so while that allows the crankcase to breathe it also allows all the oil that uh, goes into that to run back to the sump run back to the block basically um it's a massive bore that's like 35 mil pipe so you know even if the engine's blown it's not going to be breathing out so much bloody oil it restricts any amount of air as well as that we've put an even stronger spring in the wastegate so it's less likely to sort of flutter because it was a which is what was happening before the spring was too weak so it was opening and closing opening and closing that's where the term wastegate chatter comes from but no it doesn't make any fucking noise it just means the spring's too weak and it doesn't control the boost steady how the fuck wastegate chatter got turned into you know what everyone calls turbo chatter which is nothing to do with wastegate i'm not sure but wastegate flutter wastegate chatter whatever you want to call it is a, is a thing and that's basically when the springs are too weak in the gate so I've, I've plumbed it at the moment just um no boost controller at all just so i can see what the amount of boost is and i think the next thing i should do before i actually test drive it is go on to the ECU and ground the pins to advance the ignition because I think going by the footage and well going by driving it last time the way the uh, wastegate was lighting the candles so to speak suggests to me the ignition's way too retarded so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a go see what happens as well next day as well as the Volvo goes I've always had a funny feeling the ignition timing wasn't quite right it was too retarded and since I've had the screamer I've been thinking that even more because well like I said in the last video you can physically watch it lighting the candles on full throttle sometimes and that is you know a late burning ignition like that is a sign of overly retarded ignition timing so got the timing light on out on it and uh oh yeah it looks like we're right let me show you ignition timing should be about 12 degrees 
at idle. Looking at this, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I would say that's about three degrees. So it's about 10 degrees retarded even at idle. So I'm, I'm guessing right across the board. And on these, the computer controls the ignition timing. So it's nothing to do with the distributor. We've even tried that. You can turn the dizzy any way you want and it makes no difference. So yeah, it's 10 degrees retarded everywhere, which would explain, well, A, I really want to fix it because Holy shit, that would be a lot more power if uh, if there wasn't 10 degrees less ignition timing, the car would be flying. And also, that is almost certainly why it was uh, destroying them turbos, because it just couldn't take the uh, EGTs. It was always a turbine wheel that was damaged, and I always thought it was a mixture of, you know, very, very high boost, more than that cheaper turbo was made to do and um, just abuse but and obviously a heat just from being used hard but with the ignition time of 10 degrees back and going by it lighting the candles like it does it's um, a separate issue altogether problem is we can't work out why my first thought was the knock sensor because I'm pretty sure on these with the knock sensor unplugged or if there's no signal to the knock sensor it retards the ignition 10 degrees um, but no matter what we did with the knock sensor even brand new wiring to it and a spare sensor and everything no change we know it's got gr good ground signal and we put a brand new wire you know on the actual signal wire no different and I checked the fault codes nothing is showing up to say the only fault is showing is that there's no idle speed control valve fitted, but there's not, so of course it's going to say that. So, yeah, I don't know what's wrong. It's almost certainly some kind of, well, it's, it is some kind of sensor or electrical issue, I would say. But what that is, I don't know, but I really want to find out, because 10 degrees more ignition will be a whole shitload faster. And yeah, I've got that different ECU, and obviously the, the easy way out is just think, fuck all this, throw it all away, fit the new ECU, wire it all in, map it, done. But, chances are, you know, the time it's got to take for me to do that ECU is not five minutes, by a long way, especially mapping it. Whereas, if there is a problem, you know, whatever this problem is, if we knew what it was, it's probably a two minute fix which I would like to do in the meantime before I have to uh, mess with that. But the question is what? Has anyone got a clue? I haven't got the foggiest and I I've been Googling it and all sorts and can't find any firm answer and us using our common sense has found nothing. So I don't know. And it's bloody annoying because we're 10 degrees of ignition time and down and that is a lot. Six and a half hours later. That is 12, so it is now correct. So maybe I have solved my ignition timing issues. Maybe. I would try and explain what I've done, but all I've really done is changed a few suspect bits of wiring. So I guess we better uh, see if I'm right. Right, after all that messing with the electrics, the static ignition timing finally looked about right. And fortunately, it added the side effects which I didn't count on. And to be honest, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sort out another day because I can't be fucking bothered now. Um, basically, um, boost was right down. It was 1.8 bar. Now it's 1.4, which probably makes sense that that was to do with the ignition timing because it was so much more exhaust energy from the retarded ignition, which is 
part of the way reason anti-lag works they really retarded ignition plus you know excess air which is what a full throttle run with really retarded ignition would do um the boost was 1.8 bar now it's 1.4 so it was nowhere near as quick although it felt punchier which again would make sense with a lot more ignition timing the only other thing that changed wildly was the afrs were way richer like too rich which obviously slowed it down even more and to the extent that it was dipping into the nines and wanted to misfire a bit which obviously you know killed performance a bit so it was very inconclusive unfortunately <laughs> um but all that really means is i gotta do even more tinkering because you know i've got an aftermarket ecu for it now which i bought but i didn't want to just go straight into fitting it i wanted to make this work properly first so i've got a decent base if you know what i'm saying you know just going like i've said a few times before just changing to an aftermarket ignition is for no reason just because something ain't working on your current one is a fucking cop out and if you're going to give up that easy you're going to have trouble with everything else it's like fuck that but um yeah so i want to see if i can get the boost and the fuel in back to correct levels as it is now and see how it is and providing that's possible and i, I think it is then um aftermarket ecu after that but for now i would just like to get the boost and the fuel in up because before it's 1.8 bar we put stiffer springs in the wastegate and it was 1.8 bar with no boost controller connected now it's 1.4 so all i have to do is you know connect at the boost controller and we'll be back to 1.8 bar no worries there but obviously the richness hmm I'm not sure must be a side effect of must be a side effect of the ignition timing i don't know i will check i i always thought i kind of thought um more advanced ignition would make it leaner not richer but maybe i'm wrong that is something i will check on but anyway yeah as you've seen from this video the car's badass and it's awesome but it's not quite there yet not quite but it's getting there um so now it's just some minor running issues that i really don't just want to just give up and go straight to an aftermarket ecu because you're inheriting the old problems potentially do you know what i mean so i'd rather understand what's going on before i go there a3 Another day at the workshop, and today I'm messing with the Volvo again. Basically, I just, because this car's pretty much done, I'd like it just to run and enjoy it while I finish that. And this is pissing me off a bit that I'm still having to work on this where I, I want to be finishing that, but I may as well, otherwise this is going to be just not working right. So, done a few little things. The first thing, that you may have noticed already that I've done is change the cam pulley. I had the vernier one on it and I didn't trust it at all to not slip. It already slipped once. And when I was uh, adjusting it earlier, one of the bolts totally threaded, you know, one of the adjusting lock nuts things. So it's like, fuck that. And I've chucked it in a bin because, well, I don't trust it in any way. And as much as I was planning on playing with the timing to see if uh, I could, you know, make any very worthwhile gains, the fact that I didn't trust it in any way more than outweighed that. So I chucked it in the bin and I fitted this one, which I must admit, I'm not even sure what it is. It's, a, it's a, clearly a Volvo one. It must be off one of them Penta engines because... It's the same diameter, it's the same um, tough pattern and all that, but it's wider, which is good because it stops any chance of the fucking belt falling off. Because these do have a habit of riding right near the edge, and it's a bit, it's a bit worrying. But it can't on this fucker because it's like about a centimeter wider. 
Apart from that, it's the same. It looks quite smart. Aluminium by the looks of it. But um, yeah, I got that on, so no more worries there. Some American people on the Turbo Bricks Facebook page mentioned that the crank pulley is known to slip. Like, um, obviously, well, not obviously, but on most crank pulleys, there's a metal in there, then there's a rubber sort of damper bit, and then there's a metal outer. And that thin metal, that thin rubber damper bit, when they get old, is known to slip, so the timing marks are not correct. So, I checked, and mine is correct. I basically uh, checked by putting a screwdriver down cylinder number one and finding where top dead centre was. And basically, TDC is anywhere from the standard mark to a little bit further over. Because it, um, as you probably know, if you look at engines, they kind of wait at TDC for a bit. And uh, the pistons, if you know what I mean. So yeah, from there to about there, there's no noticeable movement. So at normal zero, I've left it. And as you can probably see by that, the, the dot, the timing dot, lines up as close as humanly possible to that. I mean, you know, when there's movement like this, who can be truly sure? I mean, in reality, it's probably the top of this tuff by the looks of it. But that's the trouble with uh, these kind of things. It's, it's a bit difficult to be 100 fucking percent. But, you know, that's cam timing for you. And that's kind of why um, vernier pullers are useful. But not when they're shit like my ones. And honestly, the difference you'll find between a couple of degrees like this is relatively fuck all on most. Anyway, done all that. So that's as good as it's going to get. Next thing I'm doing is changing the plugs. Because the same ones have been in there for ages now. And the car's had a hell of a hard life. And, you know, because of... Um, Yesterday, when it was when I took it for a desk drive on the new setup, it felt like it was hesitating a bit and going rich. And I presume the richness was causing it to hesitate rather than the other way around. But either way, it was doing that, which was noticeably slow in it. So I thought, fuck it, changing the plugs. Luckily, with this wastegate setup we've done, you don't have to remove it or anything to take out the plugs, it's, it's still dead easy, just as easy as standard. Maybe easier than that old setup, in fact. So yeah, here's the plugs I did have in it. NGK7s, BPR 7ESs, they all look fine. All look fine. Um, the spark plug gap was surprisingly wide. I think 30,000, 30,000 on two, and 28 thou on the other, which is relatively wide. I thought I'd have done it to 25 thou, considering, um, well, considering all the boost I'm running on a crappy single coil and all that. So on this one, I'm going to go less. I mean, these are these are the replacements. I've gone one heat range colder. BPR 80 S's should be a problem. Um, but these, even from the factory, seem to be gapped to 28th hour. So I'm going to go to 25, probably, maybe a bit less. I'm going to look at, I'm going to have a think and, yeah, I'm going to plonk them in. And then that's all that done. Then I'd better smoke, smoke test it to see if there's any leaks because, well, it didn't seem to me, well, it ran rich, which generally hints that, there's an air leak on a MAF setup. And obviously the only other thing I'd done was change the ignition timing. So there shouldn't be a fucking air leak. So I need to check that. And the final thing I'm going to do, just out of interest, but probably not drive it like it, just um, go and see, is this is a standard B200FT ignition ECU that I nicked out of um, a car in a scrapyard 
and I'm going to plug that in just to see if the static timing is any different just to make sure this one's all right I'm pretty sure this is but I'm going to uh, whack this in just to test it Later. right smoke tested it no leaks checked with the standard ECU ignition ECU because these are two separate ones same timing so yeah I've reconnected the boost controller because it seems with the uh, more advanced timing the lack of ridiculously high EGTs was making the boost lower so technically it's good to go I'm still none the wiser why it was running so rich on boost surely it's something to do with the uh, ignition because I'm no longer running the MSD because and I don't ask me why but for some reason that was making the ignition be like six degrees retarded and considering there's no ignition control on that thing I've no fucking idea how that's possible so yeah for all intents and purposes everything is should be fine I'm almost certain it won't be but should be fine I will test it later and um, yeah I've really no idea really no fucking idea but we will see But anyway, I'm going home, hence why I'm in the nice, quiet fucking car rather than uh, that noisy piece of shit. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and obviously like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff because, well, I want this channel to grow and at the moment it's pretty fucking small. So yeah, hope you liked it and um, plenty more coming because I've got a shitload of stuff for the Red Block MX-5 and God knows what else, loads of stuff. So uh, yeah, see you next time.